And joining me today is Todd Coleman, uh, the archives manager at Burton. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's it's been fun. We've been doing this, at, like I mentioned to you off air, we've been doing this history of gear series where we've talked to kind of legends in the outdoor industry, people who have been involved in the industry for a long time, as well as those people who are preserving the history of, of brands um, and really trying to elevate just kind of, I just want people to know the importance and the significance of the work that, that you do. I don't know if you feel like an unsung hero, but I feel like archives in general, it feels like something that, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it gets the attention that it deserves. It probably depends on the company that, but the fact that, that Burton has a full-time archivist shows me that, that it's a company that really cares about this work. So, um, yeah, I just, we've been really interested in showcasing companies that are, are trying to preserve their own history. That's awesome. Yeah. What um, do do you mind just on a personal note sharing a little bit about um, your pathway into the industry? Like how did, how did you initially get into the industry? Um, Well, as a kid, I grew up um, just really into Burton and um, snowboarding and just um, grew up in Wisconsin um, and um, just was kind of like almost a, a geek in a way. I just loved it so much and would follow the magazines and, and the videos and um, and the catalogs and then uh, just kind of had a dream to work at Burton and so I um, applied to Burton and it took six months to get in as a in the customer service department and um, I worked in uh, there like scanning invoices for shipping and um, doing uh, uh, helping with pro form and um, so typing in numbers all day and um, from there I did uh, rider service calls like with the you know the, the riders out there and then um, I did dealer service um, warranty the front desk um, I'm trying to think if there was other just all around and um, after about um, six years or so um, Jake brought up my name to work in archives and um, so I didn't even realize there was an archives. Um, Emmett Manning had been saving stuff all along. And um, so I started working in archives and eventually became the archivist. And um, now I've been here 20, well, 18 years. So it's gone really quick. <laughs> wow. How do you, what, what, what is the history of the archive at Burton? It, it, it seems like a similar story to a lot of companies that there's someone who kind of is the self-appointed guardian of the history of the company, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like saving stuff and, and, and keeping stuff from being thrown away. And, um, yeah. and, and then eventually the, a formal archive is created. What, what is that? Um, what's, what's the history of the collection? Yeah, it really started with Jake Burton just uh, saving things right in the beginning, um, old notebooks, sketches, um, you know, product, and um, just catalogs and everything. Basically, then it continued to, to be saving one of every style. So we don't have every color, but we have one of every style. And um, so it goes from everything from like socks all the way to wax to the boards and and everything so we have we have one of everything that's um that's uh saved here it's pretty awesome in burlington vermont do you do you happen to know when the formal archive was created or when like an official i guess it was with you right you were you the first official archivist for, for um, burton the official yes um but there was an employee before that had another job that kind of worked on it part-time just to keep it um saved Okay. Manning. Yep. So the formal archive probably around 20 years, you'd say, or, or so yeah. a little over that. Yep. Yep. Wow. I, I feel like, um, if you look at other outdoor companies, I, I wonder who has the, the longest, um, I guess longest tenured historian yeah. of, of an outdoor company. It might be you to be uh -huh. honest, because the, <laughs> the few archivists that I've talked to, um, it's a rel relatively new, um, new position that was created mm. um you know maybe someone has been there for a long time but but not always in that archiving capacity 
it might be between you and and Val Franco at, at Patagonia. I, I don't remember how long she's been in that position, but she's been a long time employee of the company, but I don't, I don't remember how long she's been in the archiving position. So you might hold the title. Oh, uh, wow. Well, we'll have, to, we'll have to see. I, I don't know if we can declare it, but as of now, I think, I think you hold the belt. Um, oh, nice. So I guess what, what was it? You mentioned not really even recognizing that the company had an archive. Um, yeah. How did you feel when you got offered the position? What, what interested you in, in that opportunity as, as kind of a geek of, of snowboarding, yeah. right? Um, yeah. I, I imagine was, that really resonated with you. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like uh, Christmas going to work, you know, like opening boxes and, you know, documenting what was saved. And it's like, you know, discovering new things every day and um, amazing, just really, really fun. Um, yeah. Did did you have to kind of build out a new process for archiving? Like it's, I mean, archiving in and of itself is a whole industry, right? And, and I don't know if there's, certainly there's like best practices across the board for preservation and all of that. I don't know if there's like, for the outdoor industry, you, you kind of have the full range of, of backgrounds um, in the archivists, right? You have people who went to school for archiving, museum curation, yeah. that sort of thing. But then you have other people who just understand the brand, who have been there for a long time. Um, and, and both are able to give that level of care for the product and make sure it's, it's safe and protected. Like, was there a learning curve there for you to, to learn how to preserve items and or document the collection like what what was that like for you yeah it was uh well it's, it started me and my friend chip bleakney it was us too and with our boss ron clary um we were um just spreadsheets and um filemaker pro 11 we had <laughs> um i don't know if you know filemaker pro but uh it was it's a database that we can take the photos of the product and um and then say location and quantity and so just learning you know how to do that and um just you know building the database together that was really fun right well for for those who are going to be listening on on our podcast probably won't be able to see this but over video those who are watching can see that you're in the the archive right now um yeah. what, what maybe you can describe the space to us we're seeing a, a a portion of the collection and it looks like you're just swimming in in uh yeah. jackets and outerwear and, yes, and everything but what, what what's the physical space like um it's um i don't know the square footage but we have three levels and um there's everything like the second level has boots and bindings third level has t-shirts um some jackets and um, POP and stuff like that and uh, the first floor has the boards that we saved as well as most of the soft goods so you're seeing those jackets behind me um, just lots of jackets <laughs> yeah yeah do you do you have print materials as well and, and yeah is that we do. housed in the same area yep we have a little section that has um, all the catalogs and Jake collected the magazines too so like you know, Snowboarder Mag, Transworld, you know, um, Frequency, the Snowboard Journal, like all those we we um, have saved. So has a real nice collection of magazines as well as uh, videos, videos too. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I, how, I guess maybe you can get into this a little bit. Um, you're you're kind of the the guardian of the history of the the company. Um, how how is it utilized? How how do, yeah. um, how do, like, what departments come to you and, and look, f um, you know, what, what are they looking for? I guess, can you share a little bit about yeah. how the collection gets used today? Yeah, totally. It's used in several ways. Um, we have designers that um, request to see certain jackets and pants or board graphics um, that we pull and then bow to them. They, they sign it out with a little contract and then make sure it comes back and um, um, so that's that's one way um, we have exhibits that we do um, at like say some of our flagship stores we have um, you know old product on display as well as a museum right here in Burlington Vermont we have a little museum that um, when non-COVID times we give tours I give tours um, so it's it's really fun to share the the history that way as well 
And, um, and the legal side, we can save things for just, you know, when we did stuff, you know, what year we did this or that, and um, just have that available for legal as well. So there's um, several ways it's used. Yeah, I imagine you're getting um, requests from a lot of different departments. Uh, it yeah. sounds like from from product, from marketing, from communications. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, that that it was interesting. I for those who want to listen to our conversation with the um, with with Gore and their archive, um, it's kind of interesting. Their archivist lives within the the communications team because Ooh. it seems like mostly um or a, a lot of the use comes from okay we need to you know we have some communications that are going out or some marketing material and yeah. we need to you know get some imagery of of bob yep. gore or you know imagery of of, of a patent or or something um mm-hmm. so there's uh, definitely a communications focus with them uh, where yeah. where do you see most of the the use getting from your side is it the product team where where's a lot of the, where are a lot um, of those requests coming from that's a good question. Um, it's between product and um, marketing, I would say. Um, like marketing, we've been digitally lately trying to do a lot on Instagram. And um, like we have a post coming out probably within a week or so that's going to show all the, the model, the custom, the Burden Snowboard custom. And so 1996 through 2021, we're going to have like a um, rotation of it on Instagram that you can see. So, um, so marketing um, projects and it's really kind of 50, 50, you know? Well, I, I think the, the marketing aspect of it is really powerful. And we were talking right before we started about our um, outdoor recreation archive that we are putting on Instagram. You know, we share yeah. one cover from the collection every day. And it's so, interesting to see people in the outdoor industry, as well as people from, high fashion to, you know, more of the sports industry to we've had graphic designers who have no connection with product. Um, people are drawn to um, the history of this industry in particular. I, I imagine you see people, well, you might see people um, who kind of come all over um, mm-hmm. who, who just have an interest in this history. Um, mm-hmm. and, it, and it's not exclusive to the outdoor industry itself. Um, so I, I think there's, there's a real opportunity there for, for, marketing for for these different outdoor companies to leverage their history I, I think more and more people care about that i don't know if you've seen that in your experience i i think that yeah. history matters right it's that heritage yep. that that consistency of like making great things for a long time and and the companies yeah. that have that history really have an edge i feel like mm-hmm. yeah yeah we're we're fortunate to probably be the only one in snowboarding that has this long of a history you know uh, saved and so we're fortunate that Jake Burden wanted to do that. Well, that's that's an interesting thing um, that I've seen, and it's kind of varied. Um, some founders don't care about their history, right? And that, mm-hmm. like, to no fault of their own, right? They just they right. don't necessarily see themselves as doing anything significant. They're just mm-hmm. doing their thing, right? Um, right. I, I kind of see like Yvonne Chenard is that way a little bit with the Patagonia. It's like, well, I'm just mm-hmm. making gear, right? It's like. That's just what I do, right? And then there's other people who kind of come in and try to save things and put mm-hmm. an archive together to preserve that history. So, yeah. You know, some founders don't necessarily feel the need to look back. Um, right. It's it's just interesting that Jake, um, I don't know how much, you know, he was thinking that far ahead, but it's interesting yeah. that he he made an effort to save things um, and, and preservation was kind of at the top of his mind. So just yeah. interesting, the different approaches that, that some of these founders have taken to how they, how they care for their history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was really cool that Jake had the vision to, to save it all. Um, well, it really takes that leadership from the top, right. To yep. get an archive off the ground too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, for some companies, uh, it, I imagine it it could maybe be a struggle, right, to to propose something like this. It, yeah. I don't know if for most companies it comes from the ground up of people saying, "Hey, we should have an archive." It seems like mostly it's from the top. Someone saying, mm-hmm. "Yeah, we're going to sponsor this. We we see it as valuable. Um, it's going to be a resource for for people. This isn't a sunk cost. 
yeah. right? This this is something that is, you know, maybe it's maybe it's hard to quantify the impact, but there's yeah. real impact in preserving our history. And yeah. I wonder if that's a challenge for other companies. And and it seems like from your perspective, you, you probably haven't um, had a hard time with that because there's always been yeah. support yeah. from the top. Yeah, yeah, support from the top. Um, so it's, it's, there hasn't been any, um, you know, hard time with that. It's um, been always supportive. That's amazing. Um, so maybe from a like a personal perspective, you you get to live in the archive every day. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you've that surprises you, or items that you've come across that yeah. it's like, oh, I just had no idea that Burton was doing this, or what? What are some of those surprising um, items that you've come across? Yeah, just like his uh, prototypes, the first boards he did. Um, he did about a hundred different prototypes and. It's just pretty crazy to think, you know, how much passion he had to, you know, do a hundred different boards um, before he settled on his first one. Um, so that really surprised me, um, his dedication and, um, to that. And um, what else? There's like his his notebooks with the sketches of like um, first, like say one piece. Um, it's just really cool to see. Um, that you know that he did that and saved it and um um what else there's you know like he started backpacks for us in 1987 um and um so it just all the like the first things are it's pretty awesome to be able to see you know the start of it yeah um kind of on a similar note is there uh, like a prized possession in the collection? Is there like one item in yeah. particular that, that sets itself apart that that's extra special? Um, I think it's prototypes that are each, each one is different and um, some like hand painted logos and just uh, really cool to have that, you know, around yeah, that, still. That is really special. Um, I, the, one of the challenges that I see, and I've, I've talked with, um, with a few people about this, but, um, archivists are like always trying to find items that are out there from the past, but also have a responsibility pr to preserve new things that the company is producing, right? New marketing materials, new catalogs, new products. Mm -hmm. Like there's a responsibility to take care of the past, but also take care of the new things that are being created because eventually yeah. those are going to become the past. Um, have have you had That's any right. have you had any struggles building in like a process to make sure that you're preserving everything that you can that the company's producing? Like how how does that work? Um, um, yeah, you know? it's it's kind of challenging because it's this we come up with so much uh, different product and um, a lot of little limited um runs of things so it's um you know i find myself almost like a dealer you know just ordering the the product in the system and then um having those quantities shipped here um so it's kind of like a dealer in a way you know oh wow that that's interesting yeah. where you're it's it's definitely on you to go out and place an order and yeah. uh, get everything um that's interesting. What what about for like catalogs and that that sort of thing? You're just on the mailing list. Yeah, yeah. Just gotta grab it, and make sure that it gets in here. Um, we, you know, and um, we have a photo studio now in here as well, um, and that's been really crucial to help document things digitally that we could either scan or shoot. Um, that'll help for the digital side of archives. So that, that leads me into another question. Like, are there major projects that you're working on with the collection? It's one thing to have everything in and documented. Yeah. It sounds like you're working on rearranging a few things or putting in some new racking system. Um, yeah. But with, with photography, like, is there a big push to photograph every item so that it can be um, viewed from anywhere? Like, what, what types of projects are, are you working on? Um, there's a Jake Burton book that's going to be coming coming out a coffee table book. So um, I've been working on a lot with that, getting images for them, like pulling the product and then shooting the board um, a certain way so that they're all consistent in the in the book and um, um, just uh, old images and um, like old sketches and, and blueprints and stuff. 
in there. So this book has been a really big project that's really cool. And I really feel honored to work a part of it, um, you know, and have it in memory of Jake. So, yeah, I, I think that that's a, especially that's, that's gotta be a really special, um, yeah. to be able to, especially with his passing, right. To yeah. be able to go back through and, and, and see the legacy, right. And you more than anyone, right. Um, to be able to be provided that opportunity to, to be the guardian of the, the history yeah. of the company now to be able to go back through and, and see the life, um, yeah. and be a part of making sure that that life lives on in a new way is, has got to be really special. Yeah, I feel really fortunate. It's a big honor, a dream come true to, to see it all come, come through like that. That's amazing. Um, well, what, what keeps you, you know, interested in, in doing this every day? Um, I, I imagine every day is different and that's yeah, gotta be Every fun, day but, is different but, from some days, you know, working the forklift to some days like, you know, finding an image of a rider or something like that. Um, a big variety each day and um, really just snowboarding just keeps me like interested I just love snowboarding and you know we're encouraged here to get out on the mountain as much as we can and so um, just riding keeps me I think hungry you know <laughs> yeah 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 um, but I, I should have asked this earlier, but are there any items that you're missing that you're looking out for? Like, do you have eBay alerts for um, specific items that you're trying to track down? There was a couple items, like there was a couple late models that limited release that we had. Um, like there was a, a twin, for example, a blacktop twin that we didn't have. And uh, I found it on eBay and, and got it. And um, I'm trying to think. A couple models that were late models I got on eBay, um, but um, we've really we really have most of the things though. It's really amazing. There isn't really many holes, um, but I keep an eye on what's going on out there. It's it's pretty cool. It, it's a lot easier t when you keep everything from the beginning rather than having to yeah, piece it all totally. together and 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 try piece to it track it down. So you you did it the right way. That's <laughs> that's the way to do it. That saves yeah. you a lot of headaches later on. Yeah. Um, what What is the future of the collection? I know that um, you know you're bringing in new items all the time. Like, what What does the future hold? Yeah. I get you. You mentioned the book. Anything else exciting that you mm -hmm. you all are working on? Um. Well, um, just got uh, an item actually. Um, Jeff Brushy's uh, crafts table board that uh, has the actual table. Um, like from the ad in 1997. Mm. Um, so we got that the other day and, um, and put that in the museum. So I'm trying to keep the museum like fresh of things for when the tours can start to happen again after, after we get back to hopefully some type of normalness, you know. And, yeah. um, um, so there's just that and keeping archives organized is an ongoing pro process. Um, just uh, like doing this new racking system is, um, you know, taking a while to switch from single racks to doubles and just creating the space we need. Um, it takes up a lot of space, so it's really important to condense it as much as possible. Yeah, well, where, where you're dealing with physical products in addition to the print materials, print, it's easier to, to stash some of that away. Yeah. What you've got behind you, it's, it's hard to... Hard to condense that, I imagine. Yeah, so. yeah it is. <laughs> but it's it's amazing that you have it all. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, Todd, I appreciate you taking time. How's the best way to stay in touch with all things archives? Um, at burden.com. The Instagram, um, we'll, we'll be posting some um, archival things, I would say, through there. And um, try to check out the book when it comes out. Uh, that It's going to be a really cool book. Of Jake. That's great. Um, well, you let yeah. us know when it does come out and we'll, we'll yeah. share it with everyone as well. Sick. Sick. Thanks. So, okay. Well, I Todd, I, I don't want, I, I don't want to take more of your time. This has been great. I appreciate oh, you being you. willing to share your experience and, and the work that you do is, is super important. You already know that, but uh, oh. it's, it's, there's not many companies that are doing what you're doing. So it's, it's really special. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah, of course. It. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm.